Welcome back to Just Thoughts and today we're just going to talk about Sigma males and what is a Sigma male? First off a Sigma male uh, and why I'm talking about this is because I consider myself to be a Sigma male and a Sigma male is someone that does not follow the ways of the world, the ways of form or the, of government and hierarchy structures in society um, we have many types uh, there's a sigma introvert which I would say I was uh, where I like to keep to myself so what is it or how is it that a sigma would think now obviously this is going to be a bias a feeling that I am a sigma male and giving my way of thinking and acting uh, for my own benefit and how it works for me. And this is why I'm saying about the whole Sigma male and how I am and how I do things that benefit me and not just to benefit others and then not benefiting myself. As in, what you would find is with an alpha male, an alpha male who out there who benefit himself but by benefiting from others or others benefiting an alpha will take the lead and want to control so they have the power where a sigma won't a sigma will know they can take the power or just play on the sideline and watch everything so when something goes wrong the sigma has thought of all the different ways to move forward with the process uh, so when something pops up, the Sigma has an answer. The Sigma always looks for all the possibilities. It just doesn't stay with one. It looks for everything. So if you want to get to somewhere from where you're at, then you have to have an aim, a goal. And when you lay that goal out, so from A to B, then you want to get from here to here. Now, you can go straight there, but that's only in hope that nothing's going to get in your way. But in realistically, we live in a physical world and we've got to acknowledge that there's other things happening around us other energies moving, other people, other beings, other creatures. And this all takes effect on us from getting from A to B. Because everything creates a memory. And in that memory, we use that memory to reflect back on, to travel out the rest of our life. So what you will find is with a sigma is that you get the goal and you go for it and you're going to have obstacles right here you're getting from A to B and from here you're going to have to go up you're going to have to go left, right, all around all different ways to get to here Sigma knows that Sigma knows that it's not just going to be straight from A to B to do one thing that you're going to have many of obstacles and the harder them obstacles are, the better, because you learn from them and you move forward with that learning. Now, what you will find is that when you're able to do this, now you don't have to be a Sigma male to do this. This is just how Sigmas do it. And if you want to be where you want to get your goals and achieve them and fulfill yourself, and in that way, what you're doing is you're bringing a better you and so you're bringing a better you to the world to the, your society to the people that's around you you're being caring more loving more honest and you're you're giving gratitude for having all this but what you will find is it's all you in how you're thinking because you put that many thoughts into your head from all the memories of the past. 
I need direct you, engage you in that path. Now, just yesterday I was talking about um, childhood, past regression, uh, memories and stuff like that from childhood and how to clear them. And I was just telling a friend about this uh, and what I was saying is, whatever your problem is, you need to look at that problem. Now, you can do this through hypnosis or meditation or just deep thought, uh, just staying focused, trance state of mind. That's what it's all about. You get these words of uh, meditation or hypnosis and that. It's all just a trance state of mind where you're focused and you're focused on that goal. And anything that comes in, it may distract you, but you're aware of it and you move forward back to your focus of what you were focusing on. Not letting these distractions hold you. They're only interacting with you. It has no meaning until you hold on to them. But you don't hold on to them, you move forward. Now, in past regression, when you're meditating or in that trance state of mind, focusing, now, obviously you gotta clear your mind first. It just doesn't happen like that. You gotta clear your mind doing a meditation or focus on something, a spot in the wall, focus it for a while until your eyes feel heavy and that and close them, relax any thoughts that come into your mind. Just let them go. See them as just thoughts that have no meaning unless you put meaning to them. And all these thoughts are coming from all your memories. And <clears throat> what you will find is when you've cleared and you're seeing this light, you now the light will always come uh, and you're relaxed, then you bring on your focus of what's bothering you in your life. So if it's an addiction or something like that, what you will find is you will go back to the first memory of your addiction that you can remember. And in this focus, you'll be focusing on what happened what you were doing and how you were using the substance. Now, then you might find that maybe this wasn't far enough back so you can go back again. Asking yourself to show me where all this came from. And as your mind brings you back to wherever, at that moment when you find, oh, there was a problem there, or there was an issue, I didn't feel such and such a way. Now, as you were a kid, you felt like this, and you observed whatever was happening around you that brought on addiction. Now, what you're observing is, as a kid, that has little understanding of the world. Now, that memory of them child, children, or your childhood, uh, is carried on into your life. And their memories guide you in who you are and how you see things, how you react to things and how you got your addiction. At that moment in time when you get back to there, what you're going to find is you need to go just before that moment of the destruction that brought through to your life. Just so. So, at that moment in time, where this child is observing everything and gets this feeling. You need to bring back another wee bit just before whatever happened. And when you do this, what you're doing is you see what happened, you put it into a wee picture frame in your mind, put it to the side and you bring on this other picture that happened just beforehand. This is your main focus now. This other picture is just sitting in the corner. You know it's there, you know it's your memory, you know it's part of you, but you're gonna change it by having this new view. So now you have this new view. You're an adult, you can see it in an adult's way. You don't have to go back to being a child and seeing it in a child's way. You're wiping this memory, this child memory that has been no benefit to you, that has brought you down in your life and not got you to where you want to be. So, 
you would see this in your life. What is happening beforehand? Whatever it was you're doing, playing with friends, playing football, or playing some activities, or making something, being creative in some way or another, as children are. And what you will find is the more exciting and the new creations that you put on that happens after that, making it up in your mind, in this wee screen, and seeing yourself and guiding yourself through your life up right up until now in a happy way, in a new version of you. And as you're doing that, watch the old version of you in this other wee corner that's all open and seeing that screen disappear. Seeing the new version of you. What you're doing is clearing them old path or that old path of that childhood that had an upsetting time that pulled them down and had that fear in them that stopped you from moving on forward to get to where you want to go. Now, simple way, um, meditate. Uh, I know I just said a uh, trance state of mind, yes, that's the main objective is to have a trance state, a focus on something. Um, Meditation is just a name for doing it uh, because there's a whole sequence of stuff to put to it, um, like your breathing and that. So I'm going to give you just a quick brief of what you do physically. So you want to keep your back straight uh, in line, blocking every spinal column. Col uh, so you're not slouching and all that there. You want to keep your back and your shoulders drop down, your back straight. And every time you're breathing, and you're breathing out, in and out slowly, in through the nose, out through the mouth. And there's many ways you can do it, but this is the simplest way. In through the nose. And out through the mouth. As you see, as I'm doing it out through the mouth, I've left that period longer than the inhale. And what this does is supplies you with more oxygen so you can last longer without a breath. Because everything becomes calming in the body. It calms the body down so it doesn't need as much oxygen either. So it's in through the nose. And out through the mouth slowly and at that time you keep a focus on something pick a spot in the wall or look at something that you enjoy like flowers or in a garden something in the garden pacific now um or a plant or a bowl of fruit or fire burn and I'm just giving you different things that you could study and as you focus on that and breathing concentrating more on your breath and as your eyes get tired you close them and you still follow your breathing now this will get you to the light the light will come to you this way and when all them thoughts have passed and the lights came to you as you focus on your breath being aware of the breath as it goes in your body, right down and comes back out again. Observing every single moment of that breath in and out will guide you to the light. When you get to the light, that's when you do the rest. That's when you make your decision to look at your problem, go back in time, asking yourself, where did this stem from? Where was this created? What was it related to? When did it first happen? And anyone or anything that had any relating to it, for this to be dissolved. So what you're gonna do is when you get to this stage, uh, just before you put in your new picture, you're gonna say, uh, Clear and transmute this across all time, dimension, space, and reality. And what you're doing is you're clearing that old habit. 
and you're in the light so your consciousness or your godly power or your creator is observing and giving you what you are putting out the same way you've put out everything in your life and that it's got you to hear but it's not where you want to be because you could not create all the other things that you want to create to get to where you want to be because of this upsetting behavior of when you were young or past regressions of some sort or another so i clear and transmute this across all time dimension space and reality and you may say it a few times until it feels comfortable and go straight to your new picture go back look at yourself in the old one go just before it and see yourself what you were doing before all that happened in the new one do as i say put the old picture up here watching it dissolve as you focus on your new picture and seeing your new creation <clears throat> evolve into you so you're creating a new pattern in your body at all the communications is crisscrossing changing every single thing every cell in your body from how you're changing your history of memories and you bring it right up till today until being joyful in today, seeing yourself as already being where you want to be, enjoying it. No matter whether you're there or you're anywhere close or not, it does not matter. Seeing it in your light will bring it to you as quick as seeing it in reality. It's the exact same metaphor in how, it's not the same metaphor, it's the exact same as seeing it in reality in how the biology affects in the body. It does the exact same thing. So you might as well have it by imagining it. Uh, it's as good as having it. It's just about creating your imagination. And the more you do it, the more you'll see it, sense it and feel it. But you may just do it once or twice and be like, I can't create that in my mind. I can't picture this. Yeah, but you're not used to it. It's like a muscle. You've got to grow it and expand on it from what you're learning. And each time you're doing this, you're growing new neural pathways to your brain because you're doing new things that you've never done before. You're actually putting focus on who you are. And these new, new neural pathways is giving you a new design in who you are. And with all these pictures that you're creating, the repetition of it creates a bigger mind, a bigger span, a bigger span of knowledge of what you can do with your mind, with your body. Um, and this goes back to how a Sigma male does things. This is how I do things. Um, just one of the ways, uh, there's, as I say, so many different ways of doing different things and getting to the light. Uh, but mainly focusing uh, and knowing where you're going. Now, you're not searching for anything, uh, as in, you're not searching for something that you haven't got, as in the pictures. The belief is that you always have all this within you, and it is without, out there as long as you can hold it within you. If you're not able to hold the sense of feeling of having that within you and what you would be doing if you had all these things or wherever you want to be then you're not going to get it how would you get it like think of everything that you do in life and what you get in return for that through life now if you are someone that's oh i wish for this or i want to have that or I want to have this, I want to be like them, I want to have, get what they want to get. Well, then you're going to live your life like that. That is going to be where life's going to come to you in return. Uh, like manifestation or, as one would say, what you put out there, it comes back to you. Uh, or God will give you what you want. Now, um, or your creator. Uh, I know God's just a uh, labeling by human being uh, as all words are but if you look at it as in you're telling God or your creator that oh, I want this or I want that well 
they see you as this person that wants for things. So what will happen is the creator will send things all around you that will make you want for more. So the wanting becomes more wanting at a higher degree. Leaving you desperate in how you're feeling sick and stressed and frustrated. And now, all around you again, you get this sickness, frustration, stress, multiplied by more. Because that's what you sent out there. And that's what you will get in return. As a segment made, we observe these things. We observe every little detail. When you look at something or conversation or situation, you look at every point of it that you can think of. Why that person saying that? Why this person saying that? Why does this person feel this way? Why does that person feel that way? Why are they at each other that way? Or why are they okay with each other? What has happened to brought them to this point? A segment will look at all the ways in how they spoke, how they acted, will they tell them the truth? Looking at the difference in what they're saying and how they're acting, the tone of the voice, their facial reactions, their body reactions. This is what a segment male does. So generally, we know when someone's talking shade straight away. Now, we don't always call it out. Uh, a lot of the time that it roll until a certain point and like to just point things out with simple, simple wording. Now, uh, what I mean like simple wording is pointing out a statement of what someone's saying, pointing out a part of it that is totally wrong or that is not right to what they're saying, that they're just talking garbage and that they're lying, basically. And this is what segment nails do. But this all relates to you and how you want to be, how you want to get to where you want to go. It all comes back to how you're focused, what you're focused on. Is your mind scattered? Are you going here to do this, going here to do that, down here to do this, all for someone else? With no real benefit to yourself, but keeping you active. Keeping your mind away from, actively away from everything where you want to be. So you get stuck here at A, wanting to get to B, never moving there, never getting there. Sometimes making a step or two, oh, I'm back again. Because you've run into a wall and you don't know what way to get out of it. Because you don't know what way to think. So, observe your words. I want. No, you don't want. I enjoy having these things in my life. I enjoy having a roof over my head. I love going out. I love to be able to wake up and enjoy this body that is given to me to go out and enjoy what is out there in life with this body. And you have to go and use love basically for everything. You've got to change the transformation of how you say things in the word. Now English language is any language, but English specifically is a programming language. Now used to be always symbols and if I was going like that well you would say oh he's waving or whatever but people just knew that back in the times and it was a wave there was no need for labeling oh they're waving you didn't have to explain any of that it was a sense of feeling within hand and that meant hello or goodbye whatever the situation was, nothing more. But they had to bring in, oh, they're waving goodbye, or they're saying hello. No, that's just programming, adding more, making it more complex than what it actually is. It's a picture of a hand. 
you see your hand, you see some movement, it means we have hi, hello, or goodbye, I see you, I'll see you later. All these patterns, or so many things that you can say to it, but it's programming. When you observe this, as a Sigma male does, all the time, you start noticing the, the format of control, society, um, and gathering people into connections um, so they follow each other, they become like each other. You know, when you're living with someone, you start adapting things that they do, and they start adapting things that you do because of the familiar already between you. And you start to grow on them, they start growing you, you start growing on their things, they start growing your things. Before you know it, you're doing what they're doing and they're doing what you're doing. And these are things that never happened before, but because there's a presence of another being there, you're influenced by that. So the more beings, the more influence. What is all that influence in doing? It's taking you away from being you. You're not getting that time to be alone, sit alone, go through your mind. Are you in the place that you want to be? Or is there somewhere else you want to be? Or how do you get there? What do you need to do? But you need to be alone to go over all this in your mind. Now, a lot of people don't like being alone, but that's your problem. I'm sorry to say. You can't be alone. Because you can't stand who you are. Because if you called, then you'd have no problem being alone. Now, I enjoy being alone. I love who I am. I love going through my head and working out this, that, that, this. Every day that goes past, passes by, I reflect on it. Every single day, everything that happens in that day. What someone said, how they said it, why they said it what way they reacted, what other things happened in my life during the day. I observe every single thing. I look at it at that moment, I'm pretty much sure if I know what I'm thinking is right, but I don't want to judge too off much. So I don't judge, I try not to judge. Now I'm always judging, but I'm not judging a person. I'm always judging on what's happening, but not judging a person as in they're bad or they're good or whatever, because to me, a Sigma male, there is no good, there is no bad. There's only, well, let me just re-correct that. As a Sigma male, as a spiritual or as a physical being, you've got good, you've got bad. As a spiritual being, I've got light. Now the good and the bad from the physical being only comes because of my five senses. Now, when you focus outside of your five senses, breathing deeply, keeping focus on one thing, and letting it go until you, not acknowledging the body anymore, as if the body's not there, then you come to that light. Your spiritual being. That's how I like to go around in life being my spiritual being. Now, because I have a physical body, that's not just gonna happen like that. I'm not just gonna be a spiritual being going around this light all the time. I've got this physical dark side that has good and bad. It's got a bit of light, it's got a bit of dark in it. The same way as you can look at, um, from the Bible, uh, where the light came to darkness. You can look at the light as God, you can look at the darkness as the devil. And the light shines on the ground, shines on us, on physical matter. So the matter is kind of like the dark energy and then you've got that light coming in as the good energy. And when it's mixed, we get creation that comes like trees, plants, food. And when we intake these, what we're doing is because we're physical and we're taking in loads of different things through the air and that uh, off 
sense of smells or using our senses, touching, then we become dark. We become that darker side of us, especially when we're eating unhealthy and stuff that's uh, man-made. Um, something that's came from the darkness and like that's created more darkness and like like sweets, chocolate, sugar, that kind of thing. But still, every single thing will come with a bit of darkness and light because it comes from the earth. As the light shone upon the darkness, there you go, the earth. Then we get this vegetation, we eat it. Then we're just, and we're part of this darkness, don't forget. We came from the earth, light shines on us, we're that darkness and we're that light. Darkness is the body, light is the spirit. And when we've become aware of this, what we can see is when we're intaking all our food, because I get asked this many a time, why do I fast? When we're intaking all this food, it's leaving a darker side to us. Now, I'm going to tell you this in a couple of different ways. And that darker side of us makes us think, feel, act different. Uh, I've observed myself many a times doing this, uh, especially if I take something sugary or chocolate or biscuits or something like that. Something that's not uh, just naturally growing. I know the next day how I feel will be off. So I try to stay away from that stuff because my temperament will be totally different. Uh, I'll be on edge and I'll be snappy. Not meaning to be, but I will. So what is happening here, and this is this is all food. There's a dark you won't find it happening to you like that as much when you're eating half of your food, but it's still happening. Don't be uh, thinking that just because you're eating half of your food, then oh, it's okay. Um, but what you will find out if you'd look this up, and this is just, as I say, more segment stuff, fasting is more beneficial to you. Now, what you will find is that you, your body is able to focus on repairing itself and what is happening is you're not putting food into your stomach or in your mouth whatever and having all that food using all your energy body's energy to dissolve that food now what energy you use during the day to go about and do everything your energy absorbing that food and uh, breaking it down is taking more energy than you doing what you're doing in general. So you've got to think of it this way, all that energy is breaking this food down. Now, when you're fasting, you don't need to use all that energy to break that food down. So all that energy be put into repairing the body, repairing the body's tissues, the muscle, the tendons, the bones, every single cell in the body. Now, what you will see is, I think it's from 18 hours to 32 hours, um, your human growth hormone kicks in. Now, what will happen is, because you can go further, now the longest I've done up to was 72 hours straight, and what you'll find is then, that will drop again. So you would start losing muscle mass and body fat. Well, this is all in the 72 hours. So what you'll find is when you're going that wee bit longer, you go past the 32 hours, well, you're gonna feel great up to there, but then you're gonna start losing some body mass. Now, that the longer you go and keep going like that, you will boost back up into the HGH, human growth hormone again. Now this fluctuates up and down all the time the longer you fast. But each time you're repairing yourself with the human growth hormone. So I recommend not to go over 32 hours. Unless you've been doing this for a while and you've yeah, studied it. and But it will do you no wrong. Um, what you will find is afterwards, any body mass that you'd lost, 
after you start eating again, after your fast, because of your body healing itself, you were able to produce all the weight that you lost and put it on in a more solid mass. So what you're actually doing is whatever fat and muscle you lost, you're gaining it back. But you're gaining it back more muscle and less fat. So this is beneficial to the body, to the mind, to everything. Anyway, I just thought I'd give a video today on with just thoughts here uh, on how signals work, how the brain functions, how we do things. Uh, I'll be back on again, obviously, to talk about different segment things and just how I would guide myself through life and how I would feel happy in, let's say, 95% of the time. I was going to say 99, but maybe that's pushing it a bit. But 95% of the time, I can be happy. And that is due to my mental state as well as my physical body and where I bring it to do the things that I enjoy. Now, I work outside of government, outside of communities and formats and all that. I do what I want to do. I do what makes me happy. I'm not stuck in anything for long periods of time because it becomes boring to me. When I've learned something, I move on and I learn something else. I keep learning new things. I don't stay with all I have, go out, start chatting to all these people out there, talking garbage about other people, what this one's doing, how someone got a promotion or this one got that. It has no benefit to my life. So I don't involve myself into that. If anything, I would advise you not to yourself. Briefly, hello, quick chat, but when it becomes pointless, that it's nothing to benefit you from, or you're gonna benefit from, then move on. Let them keep their bullshit. You don't need that. Let them have that. You don't need that spread on to you to take you away from who you are and what you where you want to go. Be you. Be a sigma. Uh, do what's best for you. And that's not saying that these people deliberately do this. Everyone's beautiful in their own way. And that is the truth. We just see things differently. We're different dimensional beings. Someone's standing there, someone's standing here, and they're looking there at someone else. Well, they're going to have two different views. But imagine that was the same person that stood here at first moment they met the person. That have a way of looking at that person, have, have a few points and what they think of that person and how they are as a being. But if they came in from this side, they would do the same thing, but probably have a different way of looking at the views. See, you've got to look at all the different ways. The approachment, the approachment of the other person, how the interaction's going. Everything's always going to be different, especially when they're different people, when there's different memories that have built up through their lives. They're going to use their memories to reflect on this moment, on this being. But if you bring it back to yourself, keep yourself as the important one. Now, this is not selfish. I, I've seen ways of people saying, oh, it's selfish. Yeah, well, it is selfish in a good way. Uh, and you're thinking about you first. You're not worried about all the things out there. But why are you thinking about you? Because it's important to understand who we are, what we are, and to give the best of who we are. Now, I know myself. Uh, I can be very argative and snappy and... I have a temper uh, if I'm not balanced, if I'm not calm or if something knocks me off in the physical world and I can't use my spirit to take me back and I get a lose control, uh, I let the ego go. But I will reflect on it and I'll be forgiven to myself. Why wouldn't I? We all make mistakes. I have no feelings towards being wrong. I just look at it as and I could have done better in them situations. And now I can look at it. If I was in a situation like that again, 
Well, I wouldn't do it that way. I would do it a new way. I would find a different path to choose from. So I would move forward with that. Instead of stuck in a way, I, I would look at myself as, it's important for me to be the best that I can be because if I don't be the best that I can be, well, I can't give that out to others. I can't share that with others. And then what you're going to get is someone snapping at you or giving off because they see someone else doing something but they would have seen it done a different way or something like that. Now, generally, that's not me. It's a Sigma male. I just see people would do it a different way anyway. That's just how things are. I uh, like to have my own input then. Um, but I will not see another person's view as raw. No matter what it is. Because I see that through memory, history of being. It is true to them. As every thought of every being is true to themselves. In how they're thinking about it. But does that make it right? No. Because when you're thinking this way. What are you really thinking about? A physical world. Where nothing is actually physical. When you look down to every depth, every particle of every little thing, it's constantly energy moving extremely fast. There is no still objects that you see with your eye. It is energy moving at extremely fast rates. And because we see it physically, we talk of everything in that way. With lack of understanding of the light the creation that came on to the darkness to create us and everything around us. So we've got to take that time to appreciate all that and enjoy who we are. We are all that. We are the creator and who we are. Through that light, when we connect to that light, then we can bring ourselves to wherever we want to be. And we can get there in the physical world with that belief. You just have to believe in it. Now, as I say, I keep focus on myself, said that a couple of times and that, but why? So I, I know I said give out back more to other people, but I know that, well, within myself and how I think, it is the way to be with everyone. We should all love one another for our differences. And for who we are and how we learn of each other. Instead of, oh, that's not how you do it. Or, that's wrong. You just say, oh, well, if you think in that way, right? Maybe you can have a better approach. Now, you're still going to be using your ego. But you could introduce your ways instead of arguing that they're wrong. And see it as, it's just a different way. But maybe my way would be a wee bit simpler. I'll show them this and tell them this. But you don't say that they're wrong. Because they're not wrong. That's how they learned. That's how they were taught. That's how they picked it up. That don't make them wrong. They were right in how they done it and got them to there. Or otherwise they wouldn't even been able to get to that. So it's not right for anyone else to judge another person. What we need to do is look at how we can help them. And help understand it them or help them understand our ways or and let us understand their ways vice versa mixing it up it loving life loving each other enjoy and that's mainly what a sigma male is we like to look at everything uh, in depth in many of different ways so you could tell me something uh, about a person or whatever so Let's just say, if I knew the person, right? So, if you told me a story about something, something happened to someone, as the beings do, interfering, being nosy, instead of being grateful for learning, we want to talk about it. Because this happens all the time. You know what I'm saying, like that. Uh, but when someone tells me something about someone, I'm like, no, right. But, like, when I say, all right, I don't respond and... A negative or good way to try not to not all the time now uh, and I just think of it well you're just having a judgment on that person right 
But at the same time, my mind, Georgia, and I'm trying not to, because my mind is going through the story as it's been told to me, I'm visualizing it. Anything that I hear from people, I visualize it. So I'm seeing it happening in front of me. And this way, it breaks down everything for me. I got to see so many different ways that you can do things. Like, um, I say that I visualize it, but I'm visualizing the story that's been told to me. But I'm also looking at a person and how they're acting, how they're telling. And then visualizing all the other ways that this story could have came out with the same result that this person's telling me. Because we've got the result. I don't really know what happened. I'm only going off the memories of someone else. And when someone else is telling you something, they'll beg it up. It'll be better than it was. So I've got to put that into perspective. And I'm going to look at every single way that this story could have went and got me to here. Now, I don't just sit down and start to think about it. This is just how my brain works. Um, you're telling me something. And as you've told it to me, I went through about a million flipping thoughts that got you to here. And I'm restructuring them all in my brain. Um, I'm not doing it intentionally. Now, there is things that I've done that got myself to this point. Because you don't just come a sigma meal. It's through a pattern of memories. Now, I had a change and many of the changes in my life. And they took effect on me to want to study about the body, the mind, how it all works, the biology, the science of it, the godly side of it, your career. And... Putting it all together, uh, looking at all different types of religions and looking at the good sides of them and the bad sides. And every single thing that I would end up looking at, what I would do is, so, Buddha religion. Uh, I would take away the meditation from that. Uh, but their beliefs, uh, I would leave them there. Because I see, and I've done practices, I'm a Kudalini teacher. Uh, I don't teach it, but I practice it myself and that. And what it does is it brings you to that light. You have a better control, a better awareness of yourself, a better understanding of life. Because you have a better understanding of who you are, what you are. So I use that. Uh, you go to... Um, I'm just thinking of, well, I'm going for the back. I was actually thinking of Egyptians. So, with Egyptian times or Peruvians, I think they're called, uh, then that time, I think that was afterwards, after the Egyptians. But they used sound uh, to move things. Now, I said that they moved the sound or they built the pyramids by using sound. Uh, there's also a mountain somewhere, I'm not sure where exactly, but there's a slice straight down the mountain, like two mountains, but it's one, and it's that smooth, I reckon Elias have done this, but this was way back in the Egyptian times, but this was said to be done through sound as well. Now, I picked that up from that, so I take that as a good thing there, uh, and then I'll go on to another religion, I'll pick up something from it, uh, and I'll use it, and I'll put all these good things together, and I will bring them into my life. But am I ever follow, following a religion? No. But I do have a religion, and my religion is uh, Dualism. It's basically don't give a shit uh, about negativity. So if we're in a conversation or a situation or something pops up, we're it's uncomfortable. Then, as a Sigma male, I would get up and go. And find my comfort elsewhere. Anyway, uh, 
this has went on longer than I thought it was. Uh, I was only going to try this out, but as I say, it went on longer than I thought it was. And hopefully you get some benefit out of this, uh, whether you're Sigma male or not. Um, maybe you could learn something from it or, you know, instead of judging. And maybe it could help you. Hopefully it does. I know it could do in how I view things and how it's brought me to the places that I want to be in. Uh, obviously I've got loads of more destinations to go but every destination that I've got to and where I'm at in life right now I'm happy and another thing about the Sigma male we don't have to sit there with a big smile on our face we can be there in deep thought and then you get people asking are you alright? are you alright? and it becomes irritating to the ego so you get taken away from the spurt where you were in deep thought, acknowledging your body, acknowledging everything that's happening around you, how it's affecting you, being aware of everything, then you're in the light. And at that moment, someone comes in and they're asking you, are you all right? And you're telling them yes. And they're repeatedly asking you, and this is like multiple days, uh, that becomes frustrating, irritating. And... As, in, as your ego is going, you're just thinking, get the fuck away from me and leave me alone. I was all right until you kept repeatedly asking me I'm all right. Where this is programming. You're trying to make me come out by repeatedly asking me I'm okay. Making me come out with a story that wants to be me not okay so I, I it's like i have to try to make up something oh well i'm not okay or this is wrong or that's wrong it's like you have to say that but i don't I, I, that's not me i'm not gonna make up some bullshit just because someone keeps repeatedly asking me programming or trying to program me i just say fuck off i don't want that now i won't necessarily say fuck off because i try to keep them words away but depending on the situation how hyped it is and I bring myself back to the light. Now, I won't always stay in the light. I will step out of it at times. I will let my ego go, like anyone. But I will bring myself back to it, knowing that it's there with me all the time. A God, a creator, whatever you wish to call it. Anyway, thank you again for watching. This is Just Thoughts. And maybe some of these things can help you in your life. Please, God. Thank you.